This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Debbie McIntyre with me. You came all the way from Brockville. Thank you very much for joining us today. You are the cessation coordinator at the Leeds Grenville and Lanark Health Unit. We're going to talk about trying to quit smoking. And uh, National Non-Smoking Week is next week. But uh, it's after New Year's. A lot of people make this resolution. And uh, that's where you come in. Yes. So yes. Let, let's talk about, uh, you, when we talk about smoking, we talk about smoking cigarettes and we talk about vaping. Can we talk about what the difference is? Sure. Is there? Sure, yeah. yes, there is a, there is a difference. Um, so when we talk about cigarettes or cigars or cigarellos, any of those types of things, that's combustible tobacco. So we call that combustible tobacco. It means you have to light it and burn it. Um, vaping uses a device with a heating element that heats up the liquid in a pod that causes a that creates a vapor so yes it is different yeah okay okay so we, we know it, it both smoking and vaping are difficult to quit how uh, how is the, how are you able to help so we're able to help with a couple of different programs now we have a I have a team of people that work with me um, that help to assess readiness um, the importance of smoking we help to kind of create a plan and get you thinking about what you're going to be able to do or what things you might need to change or um, we have a couple of different programs that we can refer to for nicotine replacement therapy. Um, we do find that most often if we combine behavioral things with some nicotine replacement, um, whether that be patch, uh, gums, lozenges, inhalers, really does double your chances of being able to quit. Um, we now just recently uh, signed an agreement with uh, STOP so we can provide up to 26 weeks now of nicotine replacement therapy. So that's new for the health unit. Previously, a few years ago, we did have a program, but it was only a, an eight week or a 12 week program. Now we can offer up to 26 weeks. So that's, that's a big help. I mean, when you're talking about uh, you know, nicotine, it's an addiction. And I mean, you could quit and even like two, three, four, ten 10 years from now, you can get that feeling of, ooh, mm -hmm. I may want to have a cigarette here. Mm -hmm. It comes back. It sure does. That's what we call relapsing or slipping. Uh, and it does happen. Um, and that's okay. I mean, we, we know that these things are tough. Um, and quitting can take some people up to 30 times. And that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And, and just because you made a resolution that you were going to quit on January 1st and by January 4th, you were smoking, that's okay too. We can, any day of the week is a good day to quit. And you, you, you've got the mindset, you want to quit. You want to quit. And yeah. if you do it for a day or two and you, you relapse, yeah, that's, that's okay. okay. You know you're trying. That's okay. And every, we know that the health improvements to your body happens within 20 minutes of your last cigarette. And then each, each day, each week, each month that you are not smoking, you get more and more benefits. So even if you only stop for a, few, a day or two, that's still an improvement and, a, and an improvement to your health. You also learn something about where your pitfalls were, where your challenges were, and you're stronger to go out, back and try it again. I know, and it's, it's as quick as 20 minutes, so you think a night's sleep, my goodness, that's yes. a head start into making your body yeah, better. Sure is. That's right. So how are people able to get support in person? So we have started doing some in person. We've, um, I, I just met with a client actually this morning and, and uh, got, uh, got them all set up and they're ready to go. Um, we can do over the phone if that's um, easy as well. Um, takes about takes about an hour to do the enrollment because um, there's a few questions that we go through to make sure that we tailor and get things in in place that we need in place for you and we can do that either in person or over the phone now i'm um, also we're looking at expanding to some evening hours um, so stay tuned for that in the next coming weeks we may have an opportunity for uh for some group meetings maybe even and uh, and some evening appointments so that's a, a big commitment on you too because it's like we, we say if somebody gets up this morning i want to quit you have yeah. to jump on that with them right away. You can't, I, I've got an appointment a week from today sort of thing. It's like, okay, I, that mindset could be gone. Yes, and we do usually try to respond uh, same day mm -hmm. when someone does call, at least to give them a, a call and kind of walk through um, what they'd like to use because there are medications as well. There are prescription medications that can, that can be um, taken as well um, as nicotine replacement. You can choose to go cold turkey. Um, so we like to at least give a call and kind of explore what are they thinking about. Um, and if they're ready, we do try to get them in as quickly as we can to, to kind of get them started. Because um, it's tough, like you say, and, and sometimes that's all the excuse they need is, is 
to, you know, not to be able to get in to and, see and somebody. It's, it's like we were talking about earlier too. Some people like to smoke because it calms them down, <laughs> and really, it's not. Yeah. What it's doing is helping them not be in withdrawal. Exactly, exactly. And people do say that, oh, I smoke because it helps to reduce my stress. Well, physiologically, actually, what happens to our body is it does elevate our heart rate, it elevates our blood pressure. Um, so it doesn't really relax your body, but it does calm the, the, the craving that you're having for nicotine. Um, it also gives you that break to walk away from what you're doing and, and take a break. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of the myths with uh, smoking and vaping? So that's one of the things yeah. that we do talk a, li a little bit about too is uh, some people do start vaping as a way of quitting smoking. Um, there's really no evidence that that, that that works. It's not an approved uh, way to quit. Um, it can come with a few other concerns as well. Uh, we, we call it dual using where people are smoking cigarettes and vaping. Um, so that can really increase how much nicotine you're getting and can really increase your addiction uh, to nicotine. Um, the other thing about, the, about vaping too, if you are going to vape, we suggest that you don't um, smoke combustible cigarettes at the same time. So just swip it, switching to vape. But if you don't smoke, please don't start vaping. Um, also with your vapes, really important that you keep them clean, you don't share them. Um, that you buy your vaping pods from a retailer, avoid flavors, um, really paying attention to the concentration, buy the lowest concentration of nicotine that you can, because some of those vapes, some of the concentrations can be as high as 60 cigarettes in a pod. And so, like we were talking earlier again too about grazing yes. with a vapor, about yes. the vape. So yeah. maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Sure. So I think with a combustible cigarette now or something that you have to light, uh, typically people do realize they need to go outside or people are very aware when someone lights up a cigarette in a, in a public place. Whereas vaping can be done a lot more discreetly. So we do call it grazing where people have just got it in their hand all the time. So that's something that we want to avoid both with combustible cigarettes and with vaping, trying not to use daily. And if you are gonna use daily, no more often than three or four hours, in be like wait three or four hours in between. So that constantly having the vape in your hand can create quite a habit there as well. It's, we compared it to a, a bowl of chips and a bag of <laughs> we chips. Sure That's right. That's we right. sure did, eating yeah. out of a bag of chips versus putting it in a bowl. Yeah. Okay, so what are some of the tips someone, uh, some of the tips if someone is thinking of trying to, to quit smoking or vaping? Yeah, so I mean, your first step to quitting is just thinking about it. And then we want you to think about what's a good day of the week for you. So if you know Fridays are always stressful, you've got this meeting or a, or, or a Thursday, you've always got this meeting that you have to deal with, it's always stressful. You don't pick a Thursday or a Friday. You pick a day that's pretty normal, pretty quiet. Try not to pick um, a day that's near um, a big event. So especially between Christmas and New Year's when that we just you know passed. Um, that's going to make it more difficult for you to, to quit. Make a list of the people who you know can support you. Tell your friends. Even better, get yourself a quit buddy. Find somebody that smokes that, that's close to you and Great say, hey, idea. let's do it together. Especially if you live in the same household. Um, living in the same household with someone who is smoking when you're trying to quit, that's pretty hard. Um, so those kinds of things there are the things. Thinking about understanding what the withdrawal symptoms are and how you're gonna deal with those cravings. So we talk about you know, taking a deep breath, um, getting a drink of water, uh, getting a little snack, going outside for a walk, those kinds of distraction type activities when you're feeling that craving to have um, a cigarette or, or vape. And I think most people know it's unhealthy for them. It's, they know it's not good, but we're talking about an addiction. Sure. Most people know I'm gonna light up and this is not good for me, I wish I could quit. Mm -hmm. So sure. that's where you come in. Yes, absolutely. And, and we do know that research has shown us that when you combine counseling behavior change with nicotine replacement, um, it does double your chances of being able to quit. And it makes it a lot more comfortable. It, we do know people who go cold turkey, and if you want to do that, absolutely. But the nicotine replacement can kind of help to just make that a little bit more comfortable for you. There is also prescription medications you can talk to your health care provider about as well. I mean, that goes into my next question. So what if you aren't there yet? Yeah. You know, like it, you know it's unhealthy, but you're just not there yet. Yeah, so if, that's okay. If you're not there yet, that's okay. Start thinking about and being more mindful of. Um, we have on our website, we do have a list of the, they're called lower risk uh, nicotine guidelines. And so they, they look at some of those things about saying, um, trying not to use or trying not to smoke 
uh, more often than every three hours. Um, choosing a lower nicotine product, um, those kinds of things are really, even reducing is a start. You know? uh, that was going to be my next question. What are some tips to prepare to quit? Yeah, so preparing you know, to quit is always nice to, to sit down and make a list of, you know, why are your reasons, what are your reasons for quitting? How important is it? How confident are you? And then when you call us and you have a conversation with us, we can talk about ways to increase the importance for you. Um, because people, I'll have people who say, oh, no, I really like to smoke. And I'll say, well, what do you mean? What do you really like about it? And most often they have trouble coming up with valid reasons or evidence for why they really like it. They do it because they're addicted to it. That's um, right. And then making a list of what are you going to do with that extra money? Cigarettes yes. are not expensive. My goodness, the cost <laughs> of a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. It's, so, so it's over twenty dollars. Oh yes. Isn't oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. And so you know, what are you going to do with that twenty dollars every twenty dollars if you're a pack a day smoker? I'm not really good with math, but that's a lot of money. By the end of the month, you might choose to say, "Hey, we're going to go out for dinner," or "I'm going to pick we up." We could take go him. to Disney or buy a car. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Start <laughs> start putting it away. Yeah. But I always look for those shorter term little goals too. Yes. Like, don't wait till you've you've saved up five thousand dollars to go and celebrate. Celebrate that extra extra bit of fifty dollars that you have by picking up some pizza at one of our local pizzerias and uh, heading home and having a movie and enjoying some family time with the time. whole family. With, exactly, you share that cost of a pack of cigarettes with the whole exactly. family. Exactly, and that's and that's another point too because your children are watching you. Yes, they and are. And you know you've got the mindset: this isn't good for me. I shouldn't be doing yes. this. And I, you, you don't want your child. You know, you don't want your child to do this. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And and it, it does. I mean, quitting smoking does improve the environment for everyone. It makes your environment cleaner. The air is cleaner. It, it's it's really a, a very important thing to do for everyone. So next week is National Non-Smoking Week. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, national. Mm -hmm. uh, the world knows this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and everybody knows it's January, so that's the time that people are quitting. But like I said, we're okay with you quitting in February. Quit in March. Quit any day of the week you Quit like. Quit when you're ready. When you're ready. Yeah, no, because yeah, some people put uh, un, uh, un pressures on themselves yes. that they don't need to. You know, yes. it's like New Year's, okay, I'm going to try and quit smoking. Yeah. No, do it when you're ready. That's right. And if you're you, more and successful. If, and if you slip, that's okay. I mean, we, we all do those things when we're trying to make change. We all have slips, so we say, okay. So I slipped. I, I've, I've lit up a cigarette. cigarette. Have a couple of puffs, butt it out. You don't have to finish it. You certainly don't have to get another one out of the pack. And you start again. Right, right. And when we say, you know, there's no smoking, uh, you know, in businesses, in, in workplaces, in schools, hospitals, uh, it, you know, common sense, that makes sense. That's vaping too. Yes, it is. Yes. yes. And you'll see now the signs have been changed to say smoking and vaping. So wherever you can't smoke, you also can't vape. Um, particularly, we're trying to do a little bit of work around increasing the knowledge around that with sports fields. Um, and children's playgrounds and, and things like that. So, Because when we talk about secondhand smoke too, mm -hmm. uh, there's not enough uh, um, research out there about vaping and secondhand smoke yet? Is yeah. that what I understand? Yeah, it, I mean it's still fairly new. We haven't had time to collect right. all the data, but we know that it is safer than smoking combustible or, or cigarettes, but that still does not equate, equate to safe. And we just don't know those long-term effects. Okay, okay. I, I see now there's more non-smokers than there are smokers, yeah. so it is going... I, I think so. I maybe. hope so. Yeah. Um, but every, you know, we want to try to help everyone to be tobacco-free, and, and uh, everyone has that, has, has that right to do that, and, and we want to help them to do that. So That's right, and we are talking about an addiction, so it's sometimes you need the help, and that's where you come in. 100%, yeah. yeah. And we will, uh, that's what I say, every journey is, is very, very individual, and your plan needs to be very individual too. So we'll work with you on what works for you. We'll help to tailor getting things just right for you. Okay, and it's it's getting to know the person too. Sure. It's like, are, are, do you associate smoking with, mm -hmm. you know, driving in the car, uh, you know, only when I drink coffee or when I drink alcohol. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you get to know the person and, and yeah. where they associate, or am I just all day? Yes. Yeah. And that's the and that's the prep work too that we talk about too. Saying the very first things you can do if you're not quite ready to quit, make your car smoke free. Yeah. Make your home smoke free. I mean, I've had some clients that say, oh, I had to put my, my cigarettes in, my, in the trunk. Like I couldn't even have them in the car because the, the, you know, the habit is there, especially mm -hmm. if you've got a commute. Light up a cigarette and turn on the radio and off you go. So putting those cigarettes where they're not in reach can help. And just making those small changes are the beginnings of, of your quit journey. Excellent. The quit journey. I like that. The quit And you're a, a quit journey. joke. A coach. That's what you call <laughs> that's what I, I'm yes. a quit coach. Yes. I'm a quit coach. And that's what I, when I try to explain to people what I do with the health unit, I say, well, I'm a quit coach because not a lot of people understand cessation coordinators. So they say, well, what's that? I say, I'm a quit coach. 
Uh, so is there anybody else that does the same as you there, or are you the only one? Well, I'm the coordinator, but there okay. is I, I do have a very dedicated team of, of providers that, that help me. I can't do this on my own, especially, you know, as we're expanding our program and continuing to, to grow. So, yeah, I've got a, a mighty little group of people there that, uh, that are as enthusiastic as I am about helping. So I, I'm assuming you're there, you know, day one, I want to quit. Or, you know, this is year three and I'm really thinking mm -hmm. I'd like a cigarette and I haven't had one for three mm -hmm. years, they can call you? You sure can. We can talk about relapse prevention and how we, you know, where those pitfalls are starting. Because sometimes it's going back to the very basics of things again when you've been three, four years and you say, well, what's changed? What happened? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you could be living now with someone who's a smoker or you're exposed more to it. or So we can help you to kind of answer your own questions about that really and I mean you, you were you were talking about behavior therapy is that behavior therapy yeah, it's just sometimes uh, we pick up you know food or coffee mm -hmm. or exercise or that instead of yeah 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 and I think each time that you do something as a non-smoker whether that's the first time the, the first time that you do something as a non-smoker is going to be a challenge for you it's going to be a new trigger mm -hmm. so you know holidays fine that you can go through those in that first year but maybe it's something that you don't do except every two years or every three years so that's going to become a trigger for you again because you haven't faced that as a non-smoker you haven't right. done that right as a non-smoker so that makes sense that you're going to find it a little awkward and a little uncomfortable that's right that's but it doesn't right. mean you can't do it that's right. That's right. And that, that's why you're there because it can be done. It sure can. It can. So how do people get a hold of you? So um, the easiest way is uh, either to give us a call and ask for some help with quitting. Uh, you also can email us at um, quit at healthunit.org.